Hi, I'm Allison Chable with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Today we're going to be using the Enviroscape's Pharmaceutical, Chemical, and Water Quality Activity Guide to look at what happens to our water when pharmaceuticals are disposed of improperly. Pharmaceuticals and Personal Care Products, or PPCPs, include a wide range of products such as prescription medication, over-the-counter products, vitamins, hormones, veterinary medicines, sunscreens, and antibacterial hand soaps. For years, people were urged to dispose of these by flushing them down the drain. But in recent years, trace amounts of PPCPs have been found in surface water, groundwater, biosolids, and soils. We now realize that many treatment facilities are not equipped to remove these chemicals from the water, and implementation of better pharmaceutical best management practices is critical to protecting our drinking water supply. So let's look at some ways that PPCPs are entering our wastewater treatment cycle. As we take medications, some of those are naturally excreted in our wastes, but the bigger problem is people flushing unused medications or prescriptions down the drain. These could be prescriptions or over-the-counter medications, vitamins, hormones, veterinary medicines, sunscreens, or antibacterial hand soaps. As they get flushed down, they make it into the sewer system where they're dissolved into microparticles in the water. When they get to the wastewater treatment plant, the microparticles pass through the primary screening and into the clarifier, where some of them settle to the bottom of the tank and become part of the sludge. But some of the microparticles continue on to the aeration chamber, where bacteria is added to help process and digest the pathogens and microorganisms in the wastewater. But because PPCPs are not microorganisms, they continue on to the chlorination basin, where chlorine is added to further remove pathogens and bacteria. This can help neutralize some of the PPCPs, but it does not remove them all. In newer treatment plants, you might see a reverse osmosis system, which will almost completely remove PPCPs, but these are expensive and not all treatment plants have them. Once the water has been chlorinated, it moves on to the dechlorination chamber, where the water is tested for bacteria and pathogens, but not always for personal care products and pharmaceuticals. Then the wastewater heads into the waterways, in an area called the outfall zone. If PPCPs are found in the waterways, you'll see problems with your wildlife. You might see feminization of male fish or abnormal hormone levels in amphibians. You may see delayed mortality in fish in the outfall zone too. The takeaway here is to make sure that we're not flushing PPCPs down the drain or the sink or the toilet because they're going to affect the quality of water in our waterways. At the wastewater treatment plant, the sludge that's fallen to the bottom of the clarifier tank could contain trace amounts of pharmaceuticals. Sometimes that sludge is removed and taken to an incinerator to be burned, but other times it's made into a product called biosolids, which are then trucked to local agricultural areas and used as fertilizer on the fields. If too much of the fertilizer is used, it might get caught up in runoff water and make its way into the streams and rivers, taking the PPCP residue with it into the waterway. There's also the possibility of water contamination by PPCPs in rural areas that aren't connected to local wastewater treatment plants. In rural areas, we use septic tanks to treat the wastewater, and then it's released into a septic field which goes out into the soil around the home. If we're flushing PPCPs in these areas, and they're not digested by the septic tank, we may be contaminating the soils and groundwater around the home. If pharmaceuticals are put into the trash can, they can be picked up and taken to the landfill. At the landfill, during the compaction process, trash bags might break open and PPCPs can spill out. When it rains, these pharmaceuticals will dissolve into the rainwater and become part of the leachate that collects just above the landfill liner. Sometimes that leachate is pulled out and poured back over the top of the landfill to aid in compaction. Other times it's drained out and taken to the wastewater treatment plant where it can be treated and released into the local waterways, still containing trace amounts of pharmaceuticals. Another possible source of contamination is medicated livestock. These livestock excrete trace amounts of pharmaceuticals in their wastes, and if the livestock are kept anywhere near local waterways, the waste can be picked up in runoff water and taken into the waterway, taking pharmaceuticals with them. Ideally, we want to make sure that we're keeping livestock away from these waterways. Pharmaceutical and chemical companies produce some amounts of industrial waste during their production process. These wastes are normally stored in a lagoon until the water can be treated. Sometimes those lagoon liners develop cracks and the wastewater can seep 
down into the groundwaters below. Other times heavy rains can come and overflow that lagoon liner, taking wastewater into local waterways. A better way to deal with this industrial waste would be to use a pretreatment in the factory and then a secondary treatment such as a constructed wetlands outside the factory. These wetlands help to pull pharmaceuticals and other chemicals out of the wastewater before it is then sent to the wastewater treatment plant to be treated and released. Another way that we negatively impact our water quality has to do with pesticides and fertilizers applied on farms and in the home landscapes. Homeowners tend to overapply pesticides and insecticides in and around the home, and on farms, sometimes these chemicals get applied at the wrong time, such as just before a heavy rain or when the ground is partially frozen. When the heavy rains come, those chemicals are picked up with the runoff water and carried into the local waterways. This can affect the wildlife in the waterways as well as the water itself. So what's the ideal thing to do with hazardous chemicals and PPCPs when you're done with them? If it's a hazardous chemical, it's best to look for a hazardous chemical collection day, which are usually hosted by community waste management services. For pharmaceuticals and personal care products, it's best to look for pharmaceutical drop boxes or drug take-back days. They take these products and dispose of them properly so they won't make it into our waterways. Visit our website for more information and a list of drop boxes around Alabama.